Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm an ASHA certified speech language pathologist here to talk to you about how to teach the phoneme CH. And I put the phonetic symbol here, which is the phonetic symbol for CH. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about why I put that here in a second. So first of all, I just want to ask you, why are you working on CH? And you're going to want to at, at, like really think about this and answer this question well, because it's not necessarily the sound you're going to choose to work on when you have somebody with a lot of speech sound errors. So this would not be my first one to tackle. Now it might be my first one to tackle if this is all they have, because it is kind of a complex sound. It is called an affricate. And that means that it's, it's really interesting because the phonetic symbol gives you a clue as to how this is produced. If you'll notice, you have a T and then you have the SH or the SH sound. So if you think about the affricate CH, your tongue comes up, it, it does almost a plosive, and then it goes into the sh, ch, ch, ch. There's an explosion, and it's a palatal sound that is a release. So there's both a plosive component and a fricative component. Ch, ch, ch. Okay, I'm doing it over and over again just to illustrate, and I want you to play around with this sound as well. It's not how I would treat it. I wouldn't have a client go cha cha cha. That's not how we want to work one at a time. So that is the thing. We're going to think, does our client have the T? Hopefully they do. What is the sound that they're substituting for the CH? And do they have the ash? Because if they don't have the ash or the SH sound, we're going to need to get that one down first because that's kind of a component of the CH. And some of our clients, you know, are subbing maybe a T for the, the CH, or sometimes I've even heard a K. Other times we're working with somebody that's got a distortion. And so they're saying, ch, ch. it's like you're, you're hearing that aperiodic noise coming from the sound that like, like uh, white noise too much when I need a precise ch, not a ch, ch. It almost sounds like something sticking. And so when that's happening, you're gonna to wanna to take a step back and look at their SH. Is their SH clear and precise like we're looking for? Shh, not If we're hearing like some different noise coming out, we know that we need to tackle that first before we work on the CH. So, I would work with my client and kind of talk to them about what's going on with the CH before I would um, start drilling it because they're gonna have to learn that this is a very unique sound that has components of a plosive and a fricative where the tongue goes up, it's a palatal sound, so against the hard palate, releases, and then you make more of a fricative sound. So it's gonna be, a lot of instruction. And if your client isn't there yet, so they're really struggling with the CH, you have to go back to the sound level. It's not necessarily fun, but it's really important because they can't build to go to the syllable or the word level until they're able to produce that at the sound level. So you're gonna to wanna to go back, you're gonna to wanna to treat that over and over and over again. Because I don't have your client in front of me, I can't tell you what to do because I don't know what sound they're put, uh, putting in place of the CH. Feel free to comment below and I'll jump in and try to help um, navigate how your client might be producing that and we can problem solve together. I hope that helps you understand CH. I think at any time when you're struggling with a, with a client, it's important to, the, to consider the phonetic symbols because English is not a phonetically transparent language and that can make it really tough when you're teaching sounds. So I hope that helps. I'll talk to you later.